Hello everyone and welcome again on the Sunset Safari. My name is Scott, for those of you who may be joining for the first time. And haven't we got off to a great start? We bumped into a small herd of elephants responsible for filming these elephants this afternoon. And the other team heading out is James and Viam. They're going to be doing a few tests this afternoon over on Arethusa. We've been having some trouble with our radios over there, but they will be joining in on the safari as well, but we'll be doing some tests, so we'll be quite busy. So you'll probably be stuck with me for a lot of the afternoon. But thankfully, we've got some great, great prospects on our way to actually go and follow up on the five Birmingham boys this afternoon, five big male lions. Well, they're not as big as they could be, but they certainly are getting there. And they're coming into this area trying to overthrow the current dominant males, which are two males that are very big, big manes, and they call them the timber males. Anyway, there are five male lions not far from here. But before we could get to them, we bumped into these elephants and we're very close to the Juma waterhole. So we figured that it may be worth spending some time with them because if and when they arrive at the waterhole on this hot afternoon, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of mud thrown around and a lot of drinking. So that's something to look forward to. And the lions in all likelihood will be fast asleep. Now we have got another Wild Earth member that's just joined the team from Johannesburg today. And let me reiterate, they haven't joined the de team, they've just come up to the bush. And that's Louise, and she's in the final control room with Tara and Nikki. And she'll be learning the ropes of how to direct. So that's a new team member that's up in the field, which is great to have her here. And when I said it's a hot afternoon, it's about 31 degrees Celsius, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And because of these temperatures, I'm expecting the lions to still be asleep for quite some time. We will certainly go there as soon as we've finished enjoying the sighting of the elephants because I'm sure a lot of you would like to see them and I know there are a lot of unanswered questions about these males. So we're trying to get through all of them and a lot of them will not be able to be answered necessarily by us but we'll certainly be able to speculate as to what may happen in the coming months with these five males. Okay, now one more thing, especially if you're a first time viewer, this is a live safari. So it's happening this very second and we would love you to contribute and interact with us and be involved heavily in the safari and to do that it's very simple. You can send us through your questions, thoughts and comments and to do so either you hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or send an email through to questions at wildearth.tv. Now that's for the new viewers. For the older viewers, you may have recognized this elephant we're looking at. Well, both of these elephants. It's not the best view so far, but it's very thick bush here, so we've battled to get in front of them. But the large individual on the right is a female, and she's got a short trunk. And it was sadly probably lost the end part of it due to a snare, which is a wire noose or cable, which is used by poachers and it indiscriminately latches onto any animal that moves through its path. In this case, it was the elephant's trunk that got caught. But thankfully, it hasn't affected her too severely. She has lost her prehensile fingertip. And once we do get in front of her, it is something that you'll clearly notice. She's still healthy and just basically can't feed quite as easily as other Ellie's. One thing we can see quite well from this angle is that they are fairly often flapping their ears, both the mother and the smaller calf. And elephants will flap their ears, not to fan their body necessarily, but to help cool the blood, which is pumped through their ears through a very intricate network of veins and arteries. And this helps to keep the elephants cool. So they've got a very great thermoregulatory device which allows them to feed almost constantly through the heat of the day. And this is important for elephant because they I'm going to ask Jandre to see if he can show you another animal that's flying around above us. It seems like it could be here for long enough for him to get to. And it's a vulture riding a thermal. It's one of my favorite things to watch. I find it so peaceful and relaxing watching birds of prey soaring above us. And often wonder what the view is like from up there. This is a 
white backed vulture and I'm guessing it may have been one of the vultures that was feeding on the remains of a buffalo carcass killed backed vulture and I'm guessing it may have been one of the vultures that was feeding on the remains of a buffalo carcass killed by the Birmingham males, the five male lions we are going to be taking a closer look at a little bit later on. And it probably spent a day or two in this area digesting all of the meat and lightening its cargo slightly in order to, for it to be able to fly off. So I don't think we have to be concerned that there may be a kill below it. And often when vultures do see a kill, they won't circle above it. They'll plummet down and you'll see vultures from far and wide all descending into the same direction. Now, eddies have moved off a little bit too far for us to film them. So we are going to reposition and loop around towards the Juma waterhole. They are moving quite slowly though, so it may be a while until they get there, but what we might, may see is that when they do get a little bit closer, the thought of quenching their thirst and having a mud bath may get them excited and we may see them pick up the speed a little bit. But for now, I think our best bet may to be heading up onto the dam wall, where if you're interested, you'll be able to actually take a look at us on the Juma Waterhole camera, which is a live camera 24 hours a day that is controlled by people called Zoomies who have access to the controls and point the camera in different directions. So if you are in... We are hoping them to do, and I was hoping that we would have a view of the elephants from up here, but there is no sign of them. So males don't do what we are hoping them to do, and I was hoping that we would have So maybe what we can do is shoot and if there's some good action, we will rush back. Because at the moment I'm kind of torn as to whether to wait here or oh, we went off the damn wall. Um, it will take a little bit long for them to get to us and the bush is very thick so we're not going to be able to get any decent views of them on their way here. vehicles getting mobile heading out in his afternoon safari and what we're going to do is just have a quick chat to him and update him on what's going on and it's vital for us to communicate with the other guys afternoon Craig there is a something glove small one as far as I'm aware heading in the Mulati up to the Via Tela Dam uh, about 100 meters downstream Well, surprise, surprise, there's another elephant that's arrived and it is in the perfect spot for us to view it. So there were a few more than I had expected. This one's got very distinctive tusks, which you will notice kind of bend outwards more than normal. And it's a young bull probably around 15 years of age as a rough guess. And it does actually look quite similar to a bull that we saw at the waterhole yesterday afternoon. We enjoyed a wonderful sighting there at the same waterhole that they're heading towards now. You may have noticed he just lifted up his trunk and pointed it towards us. He may do it again, smelling us. I'm not sure. jean carrot usually carries some fruit on the vehicle, so I'm not sure if there's a banana that may catch this elephant's attention. Something certainly has. You've noticed how he's turned around. 
What can you sense here? You may notice a slight bit of moisture leaking down a temporal gland just behind his eye. Difficult to say exactly where, why that may be seeping, but it is a good indicator to keep an eye on with elephant because it can indicate that they are emotionally heightened, be it happy or sad or anxious. Or for bigger and older bulls, they could be in a sexually heightened stage called must. What are you thinking about, mister? What are you so unsure of? Oh, maybe it's this other bull that's just approaching from behind him. And this bull's coming in. Oh, oh, here we go. What is going on here, boys? No ways. Look at this. Oh, apologies, it wasn't another bull. It was the mother with the sawn off trunk. And I'm guessing that maybe she's coming into season and this young bull's been pestering her. And maybe that's what he was smelling. The sweet swell, smell of a female who is looking for love, just sadly not with him in this case. And wasn't that wonderful to see? Girl power. She showed that young boy a serious lesson there and he didn't even think twice as soon as he saw it coming, he headed for the hills. What a pleasant surprise. And interestingly enough, now the calf's youngest calf, the, the, the female's youngest calf, also a young bull, is coming to back up his mother. I'm, I'm joking, it's probably not that he's coming to back her up, it's more likely that he's just missing her presence. They form incredibly strong bonds with their mothers. I'm probably just wondering where she's headed off to. It's been really interesting watching this young calf that we can see because when we first started viewing him and his older sibling and his mother, it was probably about four or five months ago, and it was obviously just at the stage that he was being weaned. And throughout the day and the night, we could hear him trumpeting all around Juma, begging her for milk, literally screaming and crying out to her, and she wasn't having any of it. But now he's stopped his whining and complaining, and the weaning process is probably over. I'm thinking now we're going to be able to get a great view of her short trunk as she comes back to us. and. Lynn on Twitter has mentioned, isn't it wonderful how she has managed to actually adapt to use her shortened trunk that also lacks that prehensile fingertip which allows them to pick up tiny things as small as a peanut, which interestingly enough the Indian elephants lack, they don't have that prehensile fingertip. And you're completely right Lynn, we can learn so much from wild animals, they're incredibly resilient and you can often see animals with what may appear to be a fatal injury that they over time work their way through it, heal, the injury will heal and they will just make a plan to carry on surviving. And this female elephant is no different. Not only is she surviving but she's successfully raising young while she goes about it. What I'm hoping is that a really big elephant bull also gets wind of the fact that she could well be coming into season, which is just a guess at this stage. And that's why this young bull would be pestering her. But wouldn't it be wonderful to not only see a big bull, but to see the elephants mating. It's something that I've only seen once, and it is a mind-boggling spectacle to witness. It's 
kind of like a double story house making love. Once the bull mounts the female, he is so much higher than her and often so much bigger than her, you wonder how she can support his weight. But it is something I've only seen once. And Lynn has also just pointed out another good fact about this elephant and her two calves. There should be a third one, and the third one I did see earlier, Lynn, so it is here. It's just below us in the riverbed. So not to fear, the family is still here and happy. The interesting thing about this family is that there are often just the three of them, and that's quite abnormal for elephants. Usually females will join up with other females and live in a herd of varying sizes, but you very, very seldomly will, seldom will just see one female with her offspring. Occasionally we see her joining up with other herds, but the majority of the time, it's just this youngster, the smallest calf of hers, as well as a slightly older one, and herself. And looking at the size of this calf, it's probably around four years of age, as a rough guess. Very difficult to age the animals out here. And what's important about that rough estimate of this calf's age is that elephants will, depending on the area, give birth about every three to four years. So it certainly does match up with this calf's size, the fact that she could be coming into season. I initially just assumed that it was the slightly older calf of hers that was chasing away that other young bull, but I was quickly corrected by Nikki in final control who noticed it was the mother. And now you can see that shortened trunk. It would probably be about six inches longer. And if it does ever face us, it'll look like two barrels of a shotgun, whereas an elephant with a normal trunk, you won't clearly see the both individual nostrils. So, interesting question through from George in Florida who has just asked what is the likelihood of those five male lions having a crack at catching one of these elephants and it's look at how awesome this is they're all lined up in perfect size sorry George um, there is a chance that that could happen and in certain areas it has been documented that not only male lions but large prides of lioness sometimes 30 strong will actively hunt elephants, and not just the babies, some fairly large sub-adult elephants. But in this area, it's very, very rare, but that's not to say it could not happen. And you choose. This is such a wonderful view of them. Oh, we can see the trunk of the other bull just on the left of the screen. He's scraping it up against a marula tree there. The very same marula tree that we viewed the quarantine male leopard in, and that leopard was lying up just on that branch over there a few months ago. So some interesting history behind that marula tree. Now, I mentioned the Juma waterhole camera earlier, and within the next few seconds, all these elephants are going to pop into view there. And a few seconds after them, we're also going to pop into view. I'm interested to see what may happen with this bull that's trailing along here and whether he's going to get chased around by the female again.
going to try and dip down below them and wait for them at the water's edge. They may actually bypass this water hole and go up to another one not far away from here, so that is a possibility, but I'm guessing they are going to come here. got a question through from a name I haven't heard in a while. Trent in Fiji, where have you been hiding? I hope you have a very good excuse for not sending through questions recently, but it is good to know you're watching again. And Trent would like to know where and what was the biggest elephant I've ever seen. I've seen some massive, massive bulls in the Kruger National Park north of here is where there's quite a few large tuskers whose tusks just about touch the ground and quite often with big elephant bulls who are termed tuskers with really massive ivory their tusks can quite often get so long that they eventually snap off which is obviously really sad and then you'll have an elephant with one massive tusk and then one broken off and then eventually often the second one will break off too that is if the poachers don't get them first. But certainly some of the biggest elephant bulls were, uh, in my life have been in the Kruger National Park, as well as an area in Kenya where I spent some time just north of Mount Kilimanjaro, close to a wonderful ecosystem called Amboseli, which is renowned for wonderful photographs of elephants walking through massive open salt pans with pictures of Kilimanjaro and the little snow cap in the background. And I was just close to that area in an area called the Chulu Hills, basically between Amboseli and Savo, another very well-known wilderness area in Kenya. And there was a lot of big elephant bulls that used to come to the waterhole in front of the lodge there. So that's where I've seen some of my biggest ones. Sadly, the Sabi Sands is not renowned for seeing big elephant bulls, and I'm not too sure why. Yeah, it looks like they are going to head straight past this waterhole. But they may change direction at any point. She just kicked her stomach there. Obviously, she had something biting her or something a little bit itchy. You may have noticed that mid stride. Uh oh, look at her shaking that head of hers. Is she going to chase the bull that's leading them or the same one she chased earlier? Nope. Another prime example of how we often get the predictions completely wrong. And the elephants have obviously quenched their thirst quite recently and therefore are not compelled to stop here for a drink. And they do certainly know that probably a half a mile from here is their next water hole and they are heading straight in that direction. So I'm thinking we could possibly leave them now and then head off to go and see if the male lions are still in the same place. And thereafter, once we have had a look at them and determined what their mood is and what their likelihood of getting active is, we will make our next plan. Or maybe we can loop ahead of them one more time and just enjoy one last view of them before they do disappear into some thick bush in the riverbed that feeds the Juma water hole behind us. A 
another very plausible theory that I did not think about is that maybe this older bull has been bullying this elephant's calves and that's why she chased him off earlier. So that's something for us to all think about. And another question from Lynn. And she's wondering if I have got any idea as to, or speculation as to why she doesn't hang around with other elephants as most females would typically do. And Lynn, I don't have a clue. I've thought possibly because of her slightly different trunk, she may be ostracized or bullied, but it's highly, highly unlikely that elephants would pick on another one simply because she's got a slightly shorter trunk. I think they are a lot more friendly than that usually and are often very caring for other members of the herd. So difficult to say, and that is the only kind of theory that I can think of. Other than that, I thought maybe it's the youngsters that cause trouble within the herds, but whenever we have seen them joined up with other herds, the youngsters seem to get along very well, so it's not like she's catering specifically for her youngster's needs. And maybe she is just, you know, a slightly has a very different personality to most other elephants and is happy alone with her family. Oh, isn't it wonderful how all of you can help us piece the puzzle which is this African wilderness together and we've just got a message through from Donna who was obviously watching the waterhole camera earlier and she saw these elephants taking a drink so that will explain why they aren't taking a drink now they were here not so long ago so thank you very much Donna And I really love the way you guys support us and help us by feeding us all this information that we would otherwise have no idea about. And it really does help all of us to get a better idea and understanding of why these animals do what they do. There's a lot that is unknown about wild animals, even if they are heavily researched. And a lot of that is because of the fact that, just like humans, animals have their own individual personalities and traits and that could be the reason why like I said this female simply doesn't like hanging around with the herd there's not much that she has to be cautious of archer there's not many prey animals so she's not getting any major major benefits of being around a herd all the time and maybe she just likes moving more slowly at her own pace. And maybe it's the fact that her trunk is slightly shorter, which means it does take her slightly longer to feed. That causes her to do her own thing. You may have seen a little black bird fly through the screen there. That was a fork-tailed drongo. There it is sitting up in the tree. And if any of you were on the Sunrise Safari, we had an awesome, awesome sighting of one of these birds following the vehicle. And just like it's following the elephants now, it was flushing, in, it was feeding on insects that we were flushing up as we drove past. And Jimelin in Oklahoma asks an interesting question. She's interested to know if... And, no it isn't, it does depend on the country you're in, but usually... The landowner of wherever that tusk is found, 
but there's a very stringent policy and a lot of having permission to hold ivory. As Jimlin, if you are found with a tusk in your bag when you're on your way back to Oak, you'll find yourself in deep trouble. So, technically, no, it won't, and a lot of ivory in warehouses, and that way it prevents the free flow and trade of the ivory, or at least it's an attempt to. Look at all those veins behind the ears there, and they can pump liters and liters of blood through those veins and arteries every minute, as we discussed a little bit earlier, and that's why she's flapping them. Those large ears actually make up 20% of the surface area of the elephant's body, which I, when I first heard that fact, I was like, no ways, that's impossible. But it's double-sided, and there's two of them, and when you think about it, it actually is very, very... So that also increases the surface area ever so slightly. And another interesting thing about this big female and her ears is that she's got a very distinctive notch on the right ear. It's not a notch, it's actually kind of like a bulge. It's a funny little bump. And I'm pretty certain it's her right ear because I can't see it very clearly on her left ear now. And that was pointed out to us by Gerda a few drives ago. So despite her trunk being shorter, she's also got a very distinctive bump on her right ear, which can be helped use to identify her. And for those of you who are new to the safari experience, we really do enjoy getting to know the different characters as much as we can. And therefore, very small marks or tears or scratches or scars can often be the defining characteristics that help us work out who is who. And it is really wonderful how we get to know the behavior of these animals, just like watching this going through the weaning period when it used to scream and complain day throughout the day and night you could hear this calf somewhere on Juma complaining and some of you would have remembered that and got to see that but now it's grown up There's another elephant bull that's just arrived on the scene. Now this is going to be interesting. And while we wait to see what happens here, because I'm guessing he's going to show interest in this female, we've got an update through from Dorf in Pittsburgh. And thanks very much for your updates. Apparently yesterday this same family of elephant was seen at this water hole behind us. And an elephant bull was giving the calf trouble or the car's trouble, and what the female did was let out a loud trumpet and chase the bull away. Watch closely here. He's going to put his trunk behind her back legs, I'm fairly certain, and smell. Yes. We can't see clearly, but he is sniffing very intently. And this will explain why the other bull was chased off by her. He's probably been a little bit too forceful in his approach. These bulls are far too young, but I'm interested to see now that we're far too young to be wanting to mate with her. It's just their natural instinct kicking in, hoping to get lucky. But let's watch and see what happens here, because if he continues to pester her, she probably will chase him off. 
but all seems calm and peaceful, so strange behavior. Always great to hear that there's a new viewer watching. Hello Ella and good to have you on the safari with us. Ella's interested to know, is the elephant part of the big five? And you are spot on, it's a good start to your safari live experience and you've, like I said, nailed it. The elephant do make up part of the big five. It's them, the rhinoceros, the buffalo, the cape buffalo, leopard and lion. And all five of those animals do occur in the area that we're working in. However, we do not show rhino as we do not want to ever disclose their location because the rhino poaching at the moment is catastrophic and we don't want to in any way aid poachers in knowing the whereabouts of rhino. So that's the one animal that we sadly won't be able to show you out of the big five. There's another one we'll be able to show you later. There's five big male lions waiting not too far from here for us. And we are also extremely privileged in the amount of leopard sightings that we get as well as Cape Buffalo. And even though the Big Five are very well known and famous for various different reasons, there's a lot of other wonderful small and weird and wonderful creatures that you'll also get to know whilst on safari with us. So that's something that you can look forward to experiencing. And Ella, what we love knowing is not only that new viewers are watching, but where in the world you are from. So please feel free to let us know and to any of the other new viewers who are sending through questions, like I said, just let us know which city or country you're in. Because it's wonderful for us to get an idea in our head where we're talking to people or where about you are when we're talking to you you've got a good idea of what we look like and where we are but we've got nothing to go on so it is try quite nice to try and get an idea of you sitting up late at night watching the safari or if you've waken, woken up at an absurd hour in the morning so let us know all those little facts You may wonder why there's a small fence post to the left of the screen and that's a fence that keeps the Juma guests safe at night. Not all camps in Africa will have fences around them but here at Juma the camp is fenced and it's for a couple of reasons from a safety perspective it obviously makes it safer if the wild animals cannot easily move through the camp. Having said that though I have seen leopard quite easily sneak under this fence but the gardens are also manicured and quite beautiful and if these elephants were allowed in there they would undo all the hard work in the garden. Very tranquil afternoon. The temperature's cooling down quite considerably. And that's good for not only us, more comfortable for the humans, but it does also make it more comfortable for the animals. And the more comfortable they are, the more inclined they are to move around. Elephants are different, and that's why I've got off to such a great start by being able to view them. The lion that we're hoping to spend some time with a little bit later well, in all likelihood, be fast asleep, and unless a Cape Buffalo or some other prey item came running past them, they're probably going to stay that way for about another hour, I'm guessing.
No, I've just been stumped by Umang. And Umang has asked, why do Indian elephants have smaller ears than the African elephants? Because it is, no, it is very hot in India. So that will be my only debate. But even if the temperatures are exactly the same or India is hotter, the bottom line is their ears are much smaller. And I'm not too sure what could be the reason for that. Possibly the terrain and vegetation that they find themselves in is more shady. And is more shady. Or they may not have to travel as far as African elephants for food. So that may have a big role in the need for them to be able to feed throughout the day and therefore thermoregulate themselves. But if anybody does know the exact reason or hypothesis as to why the Indian elephant has a smaller ear than the African and still can manage in the hot climate that it lives in, please feel free to share it with me. And that way we can help not only myself but also Eman get to the bottom of this. Good question though, and it's great to be stumped because then it does allow us to all learn together on this safari experience. So We've already had a comment through from Lady Macbeth and she's mentioned that maybe because they live in the jungle it's a little bit cooler and I did say that maybe it's slightly more shady even though it is humid in India we have also just got some reports through saying that on average it is also typically cooler there so we are kind of getting to the bottom of this among And the fact that India is slightly cooler may be the answer all in itself right there. I love the way elephant calves always stay so close to their mothers. It won't be like that forever. But up to about this age and maybe for about another year until the next calf is born. Well, it will only be 22 months if she still needs to mate if she is in fact in season. But probably when the next calf is born, she will make way for the new calf to sidle up to the mother. But they do form incredible bonds and apparently do have incredible memories so it's not just an, a theory or a myth the saying that's quite often used which is a memory like an elephant they do have incredible memories and these memories along with the bonds that they forge makes them very interesting animals Now, I've just spotted a bird that I would like to show Ella, along with all of you, because it's a bird that we don't very often get to see, and it's not only about the biggest of the animals here in Africa, but also some of the smaller ones, and you wouldn't believe it, but on cue, the little Natal Franklin that I was hoping to show you ran off a little bit further but it's still close enough for you to appreciate its pretty colors and feathers look at that watch closely on its head how from time to time it will flare up its crest oh it, it did it there but it was facing us so it was hard to see it can just go instant afro there we go, <laughs> depending on its mood. And isn't that a pretty bird? Very chicken-like, as you can see. 
Now this looks like a male to me and I, I can tell that because he's got very, very large spurs coming out the back of his legs. Interestingly, the one on his right leg doesn't appear to be there. Oh no, there it is. It's just not as visible. coming so nice and close to us here. Might even get to a point where Jandre won't be able to film it anymore. I'm well, very happy to hear that Ella has sent through her home country to us and she is from England. I hope the weather's good and all is well over there. It's been quite some time since I've been to England, so maybe I need to plan a trip across there soon. <laughs> I'm not sure why it got a fright, but it just shot off at a rapid rate. Very big thanks to Pretty Nightmare in Dallas as well as Diane for doing some more research to confirm that it is in fact cooler in India even though it is more humid there. That environment is suited to the Indian elephant's slightly smaller ears as it's not quite as harsh in India as here and that's why our African elephants need the bigger ears. So Mung, we've got to the bottom of that. and. What I think we're going to do is maybe let Jandre show you one last view. It's quite a pretty scene of them all disappearing off into the thick vegetation here. Whoops, not the best view, but it is natural what we are seeing here. And it happens about every half an hour to 45 minutes. They usually pop out three or four of these two kilogram, four pound boluses of vegetation. And just as quickly as it's going in, obviously it needs to be coming out to make space for more food. And Another big thank you to Raisa, as well as I think Diane, who have mentioned that Brent and James have both also speculated, as I said earlier, that the reason why this female with the short trunk doesn't move with the larger herds is because she doesn't feed as quickly. So that's a good plausible theory. Well, it's been a wonderful start to the Sunset Safari and it's been great having you on board with Jandre and myself. But now it's time for you to jump on board to another vehicle. And I'm sure James is ready to entertain you. He's a great guy if you haven't met him. Enjoy. He's going to give you an update on his, how his afternoon's been. And we are going to head off to the Lion, so that's hopefully where you'll see us next. See you later. Hello everybody, welcome to Jigger. Uh, I know it's been a while that you've been with Scott, but that's probably a good thing. I believe he's had a wonderful elephant sighting. We have been across to Aratuza to see what's going on there. Not a lot as it would seem. Um, but I can report that there was sign of Shadow and Naomadiba, her son, 
aka Nelson Mandela. Uh, they are on Arethusa together, it would seem. Tracks are there, but no success. So they are absolutely fine, and I know there was a lot of concern about where the shadow would come back to, excuse me, killing the flies. A lot of concern about whether Shadow would come back to her son, which she has indeed. Whether she's pregnant or not, well, that remains to be seen, and that's going to be very interesting going forward. So, they are fine. And apparently, officially today, um, I think it was probably a few days ago, but now we definitely know that Sindila, the name, is out the window, and Madiba is the new name. And that was named by Sean and Rivos, and Sean and Rivos were the first people to find Sindila when he was a little boy before he now became named after Africa's greatest son Nelson Rolihlahla Mandela and Madiba of course is a praise name from his uh, clan any sense but let's face it they've done a lot of strange things over the last little while that don't necessarily make any sense so it's possible I'm just gonna check in this area and see if we can't find a few tracks I did find one female lion track which is interesting now just before we do that just to keep you updated one of the Matimba males was found on Mala Mala today and he did injure a Styx female the other day in fact yesterday he went and finished the job this morning. So that sticks female, the two and a half year old female is now dead. Killed by Hairy Belly the Matimba. The explanation for this to me is is unclear. I've read that perhaps it's because she is not ready to mate yet. She's two and a half years old. She's ready to mate. Um, I've never heard of that being uh, would make absolutely no evolutionary sense at all that a male lion would kill a female simply because she's not, not in a state to mate. She was to me looking very sick, very emaciated, perhaps had TB and perhaps the sickness in her combined with the aggression from the Matimba because he's under such pressure um, made him attack her. I don't know. I don't buy it that the fact that um, I don't buy it all the fact that he would have killed her because she wasn't at the right age to mate. I don't think that that's viable, especially as she was two and a half. Anyway, uh, it's all rather interesting and we are going towards Scott is going towards the Birmingham males so we'll see what he finds there and we can answer some more questions on them and see what happens there so what are we going to do is turn around and we're going to head up basically parallel with our far western boundary and see if we can't pick up further tracks of the lions that I think we were tracking at the end of the morning before I managed to find the Birmingham boys and when I found the Birmingham boys, it was purely by luck. I was doing a camera test, I drove up a random road, and there they were. So it wasn't any skill on my part that caused me to find them. And their tracks don't go from here to there. So it's all rather a mystery, it's all rather frustrating, but most of all, it's all rather fascinating. And by the way, um, I know we did our introduction a little bit later than we normally do today. Uh, we have Viam on camera today. Viam is dressed in spanky new um, sort of uh, very uh, impressive bush clothing really. Yes, but they're clean today and freshly pressed. You look very smart, Viam. I'm paying you a compliment.
yesterday, yesterday I was severely injured by a knob thorn. Um, Liam, can you see my injury there? There it is. Look at that severe injury. Thank you, uh, Lady Macbeth, for checking on that. My arm is a sore, but I have a further injury to show you. Please observe my leg. Now, the first thing you'll notice about my leg is that there's not a huge amount of flesh on it. There's not a lot to it. And that um, injury there was a, a pile of wood by the fire last night that snuck up upon me and attacked me on the bottom of my insubstantial plover's leg. And uh, it was deeply painful. Um, I feel very much like I have been in the wars. Anyway, naturally, um, despite, despite the fact that all of our crew have got first aid training, in fact, six of them, including my illustrious cameraman here, have just done first aid training, none of them acquiesced to help me. None of them offered to offer me any kind of assistance. Um, nobody tore the shirt off their back to bandage my injuries. So I'm feeling a little bit, um, well, I'm feeling a little sorry for myself. Vian, would you like to offer an explanation for why you didn't help me last night? I told you. No. Yes. Anyway, there it is, Lady Macbeth. Thank you for your concern. This is not, I'm going to say something here that's perhaps not the, going to be that popular, but this is not my favorite part of the reserve at this time of year. And that's because it is a sodic area. And so what it is, it's largely filled with sort of salty uh, soils. And the, just about the only green tree here at any stage is the magic worry. And that's the only greenery that you can see around here. The bush gets rather thick and they're just not particularly beautiful trees at this time of the year here. In summer it'll be a bit different. It's always got kind of um, a, it's got a washed out feel about it, I feel, this area. But we're just looking to see if that female lion track I saw didn't come up here maybe. Not a huge amount of point in following it on foot too closely because it was from early this morning. So, I mean, the lions could be anywhere by this stage. to just quickly show you is there are some impala there of course but if Viam if you keep panning to the right there look at that in the middle of your screen now is an enormous community uh, nest spiders web see that that's huge and it seems to be hanging rather than yeah, I think that's probably been pushed there by the elephants when they destroyed that tree. And in there are a whole lot of little spiders. If you're an arachnophobe, um, putting your hand into that nest would be an extremely bad idea. It would result in cardiac arrest quite fast, I imagine. All right, let's carry on. These impala are now enjoying these impala are now enjoying the sodic area because the grasses here are much richer than they would be on any other area because the soils are richer to the point of toxicity sometimes for the plants.
lovely smell in the air. I saw my first knob thorn today with flowers on it. And I'm sure they're all going to start flowering very soon. Very appropriate that I should have seen that on the first of spring. Just near our camp. So I wasn't on drive. You smell that, Viam? I believe that's to be Osimum that I can smell. Wild aniseed. Don't see any further lion tracks here. A loss and a lock. Oh, some wildebeest. Now, we're going to look at these wildebeest, and while we do that, I'm going to thank Gracie, aged eight, eight in Iowa. Gracie, you say that you will give me a Superman bandage for my leg. Well, I think that's very kind of you. Thank you, Gracie. And I'm going to tell Viam that that is how he should treat me the next time I become attacked by a piece of firewood. Viam, Superman bandages, please. You will go and buy them next time you're in town. So those are two wildebeest. There used to be three in this area. There's a, there's a bull, definitely, and a cow there, 